What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the 20-Minute Wrestling Podcast. I am, of course, your host, Mick Manhattan, the scene snob, and uh, I am back again. I was supposed to have a special guest, but unfortunately, that fell through, and um, so it's just me solo again, but there's a few things I wanted to cover, so um, I'm just jumping in, and right now, like last week, we got word that Vince McMahon tore up yet another script. Now, I remember he was doing that back in the day with uh, quite a bit with when it came to SmackDown, especially on Tuesday nights, like getting ready for Fox, but... It seems like he's been out of commission for a little while with XFL. And Paul Heyman, of course, has been doing a great job. I thought Raw has been fantastic. People getting pushes that deserve to get pushes. Um, and so much more going on. Uh, I think rumor around the mill is that Vince saw Super Showdown and what was set up. And I don't think he really liked the uh, Ricochet versus Brock Lesnar angle. Turned around, checked out what was going on on Raw, and did not love it. And then kind of, kind of buried Ricochet, you know, um, put him down with uh, Riddick Moss beating him for the 24-7 belt. Uh, and it was, man, that was, that's a tough one, especially if there was a script writ, written um, ripped up earlier that day. So I all I can say is uh, I'm getting a little tired of it. You know, the, the stories have been finally getting good on Raw, uh, catching eyes, but it, they aren't bleeding over into the pay-per-views. SmackDown has not been good. NXT has kind of been losing its footing a little bit for the past couple of months. And I hate to see it, see it but like WWE is just not pulling it together. And I really think that's because of the nature of how it's run. Um... So, and, but I, w I had a little hope for Raw, but hopefully we can keep that going. Because honestly, after Elimination Chamber last night, I am not too hopeful. Elimination Chamber was just not a very good show from start to finish. Um, you took away from the storyline in the tag team. For, I think it was the first ever tag team Elimination Chamber. If not, then uh, it showed promise. I mean, you had, you've been building up the storyline between Heavy Machinery, uh, especially Otis versus Dolph Ziggler and uh, Bobby Roode. And you had this whole thing set up. Why do we need New Day? Why do we need Usos? I'm, I'm fine if they're in there to add to it. But really? Like, now they're just taken away from it. it and it's just, it, it's starting to get old and stale. Like, we've seen those two go at it over and over and over again. And I, you know what? I, I don't know that Miz and Morrison need the belts. They're good enough heels. They're good enough tag team to kind of keep it going. Um... Maybe put the maybe put the belts on Root and and Ziggler and have heavy machinery even more of a reason to go after him than the Mandy Mandy Rose thing, but there's just so much to it that's just not isn't that just really didn't play out and it was not played along with yesterday, and um, so then we get uh, the women's elimination chamber match, which I, I mean. We knew what it was. We knew what it was going to be. The, the crowd turned on this. We knew it was going to be Shayna Baszler. But you've completely decimated your entire women's uh, division. She choked everyone out. Now, I get Asuka is hurt. She had a real wrist injury. So then take her out fast. Don't let, don't let her linger until the end. Um, there's so much more you could have done. But, like, I mean, you were building up Liv uh the Morgan, she gets choked. Everybody got choked out so quick in this. To the point where it was like, I, I don't even know. It was uh, it was just Shayna Baszler sitting on the ropes waiting for the next person to come out so she could choke him out. And I know it's supposed to show her as like this unstoppable force coming towards Becky Lynch. And Becky Lynch is going to have her. It just wasn't good storytelling. It wasn't a great build up to it. And now we're going to wait till WrestleMania which is next month, and we're going to see how it all goes. But honestly, like, I, I'm just not excited for it. I'm not excited for anything going on in WrestleMania this year. Um, yeah, we got a flash of The Undertaker coming out with uh, AJ Styles, and uh, he double choke slams uh, Anderson and Gallows. Um, you know, um, uh, took out AJ, disappeared, put Aleister Black back in the ring, and uh, Aleister Black won against AJ Styles. Great. But... Again, I'm, you know, it'll be a fine match. They're both legends. But again, I'm not excited about any of the rivalries. Like, you just haven't done enough for me. You haven't built them up. 
You haven't had good storytelling, you know? Um, even with Cena and Bray Wyatt, when are we going to get more? You know, more than just a tip of the hat. Like, why? Just because Bray Wyatt wants Cena. Now, yeah, I understand they have a storied past when, with the Bray Wyatt, um, with the Wyatt family and everything like that. But that was in the past. That's over. You know, so all he had to come out and do was point out the WrestleMania sign, tip of the hat. Now, that's it. We're just going to see each other. Will Manable Claw take out John Cena? Like, I, I don't know. I just, this whole thing has just left a bad taste in my mouth, and I'm not excited for anything. And it's sad, because I've been so amped up on the other side of it. And um, with that being said, though, uh, to go over to AEW, AEW and then has this great show last week. Yet again, it was an, it was an episode after a pay-per-view that really had no business doing that well. And... Uh, you know, just kind of being a slow episode, but it was a fantastic episode. You had Jericho versus Moxley rematch again. It was a, now, of course, it was a tag team match with uh, Sammy Guevara and uh, Darby Allen coming in as, uh, you know, uh, for each respective team's uh, partner. And then it, uh, Jericho said, if I, if I lose this, I'm gone for 60 days. I will take a leave of absence for 60 days. And, of course, they won, and I love it. And they triple powerbomb Swagger and... Uh, Swagger. Jake Hager um, and the uh, uh, and the boys in the inner circle all powerbombed him through a table, which I thought was kind of a cool little nod, uh, sort of, to the shield, um, which I thought was well done. But my favorite part, and kind of my favorite part of what's going on with AEW right now is Cody comes out. He just lost a match against MJF. That was a huge buildup, and then he loses by getting cheated out of the match. You know, after a grueling, grueling match. Um, has to come out humbled and kind of answer the questions and, and, and talk. And who comes out right before he starts speaking? None other than Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake Roberts comes on down, gets in the ring, one of the best promos I've ever heard, because he was a great mic man, and he was a great technician, and everything else. And tears Cody apart. Rips on him for his loss. Uh, rips on him for how he's running things. Rips on him for how he's a wrestler. Uh, who he is as a man. The whole nine. Turns his back, says one of the most craziest lines, and goes, you know, a wise man once told me, Never turn your back on somebody that you um, fear or someone that you respect. And he turns his back on him and walks out. It's amazing. Now, Jake the Snake's not coming back to wrestle. He's obviously going to be the manager for somebody. I'm wondering who. I'm wondering if it's Matt Hardy. So, you know, that's a mic man. Uh, and <laughs> even, like, Cody's like, what just happened? You know? It was, it was terrific, the whole thing. But here's where I applaud AEW and what they're doing. So you look over at WWE, and they'll bring back Hogan, for, especially for the Saudi Arabia shows. They'll bring back Flair. You know, great. It's great that they pay these guys, and it's great that in the back that they have a lot of older veteran wrestlers that are, are running things. That's fantastic that they're paying them. I'm not taking away from that. But there are a lot of guys out there that put their blood, sweat, and tears into it and, you know, just want another chance. And they're never utilized. If they come out, they're used as a joke. WWE has always used veterans when they come back out as a joke, unless you're The Undertaker or Kurt Angle. And even Kurt Angle sometimes. You know, the whole Jason Jordan's my son, illegitimate son thing was pretty much a joke. Um, but, I mean, they abuse The Undertaker and coming out, and like, it's great to see him, I love the Undertaker, but the man's in his 60s, and he's coming out, and he's wrestling matches still, because Vince wants ratings, and doesn't know how to build up stories to build up uh, new talent, you know, whose fault is that, so, I, I, I just, um, it drives me nuts to see that, even like, and it really drove me nuts when they did that, I think it was back in October, and they brought back, Flair was going to have a team, Hogan was going to have a team for the Saudi Arabia match and then Crown Jewel. Um, and it was just a joke. 
The whole thing was just a joke. And that's how they treat them. Out on stage, like veterans. Like, oh, you guys are too old for this. And then you go over to AEW. And these guys are revered. Arn Anderson is Cody's coach. Tully is uh, Sean Spears' coach. Uh, Diamond comes back out. Sometimes he'll fight, but he's never disrespected. Dustin is a, is a, you know, he's a, he's just a member, you know. He's but he's a veteran. He's been around for years and years and years. Um, Jericho, you know, not these aren't retired guys, but they're they are veterans. Have been around for years and they're showing respect. And then you have Jake the Snake come out. Jake the Snake has had plenty of troubles in the past. I'm not going to comment on those. Um, but he comes out. You know, we all saw a documentary. Um, how he got his stuff together and, and, and is in better health and such. So it's great. And to see him come out was great. He still had an awesome presence on the mic. They gave him something to do other than be a joke. You know, like they legit... Here you go. Like, WWE thinks you're a joke, and then they'll treat you like a joke if they can get you on there, pay the money, and then be like, oh, yeah, but we'll make up for it by putting you in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame is a complete and utter joke. I'm sorry. It is. The Bella Twins are in there. You know? And I'm not saying that they wouldn't deserve to be there one day, but they're only getting in there because of politics now. There, I said it. There's plenty of other, if you want female... Um, representation of, of, uh, that aren't in the Hall of Fame, um, absolutely deserve there. And now why are the Bella Twins in there, but not, uh, AJ Lee? And if Paige is, um, retired, why not Paige? Like, if you're going to go with the Bella Twins from that time, there's plenty of others from that time who deserve it before they do. But whatever. We know why. So, um, that's WWE and AEW, and that's just how they handle things, and there's like a respect there, and it's nice to see, it's a beautiful thing to see, and I, I love it, but then, taking one step further, it's being reported now that um, WWE has a convention rule. Now, anybody who knows, like, celebrities have been doing conventions for about 20, 30 years. Now, I'm not saying that they haven't been doing that before them. But, like, I'm talking about real, like, celebrity guest conventions. Like, you go to conventions and there's a whole room or a whole tent or or whatever. Or they're all over the convention. And they charge money and, and things like that. And, you know, whatever. But that really started with wrestling. You know, I, I'm not going to say it's the exact thing that started. But wrestling was definitely something... That was always had a presence at conventions. Older wrestlers, that's how they made their money. Um, you had so much from others, uh, from other wrestlers. Like, you know, when they retired and they needed to make some extra cash, they were traveling around and do, do these signings and things like that. So now you have these conventions, and WWE is so petty from what is being reported that. The convention has to choose if somebody that works or has worked with AEW is there, and then no WWE talent is allowed to be there, or that is affiliated with WWE. Tell me that is not a bunch of giant horse crap. So now, not only does the convention have to maybe spat on the face of AEW, or risk WWE never doing their convention again, even if they don't have anybody from AEW there. But they take away from talent being able to make money. What if a WWE, you know, former wrestler or current wrestler or whatever wants to go and wants to sign? If they've worked with AEW before, so now what does that mean Bret Hart? Bret Hart showed up on AEW. Um, Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, Jake the Snake. You know, so so if they want to keep WWE there, who that could be Sting. Sting could be considered a WWE guy. Um, or anybody, really. Um, Rey Mysterio could show up at places, things like that. Like, do they have to tell AEW, sorry, we can't, we can't keep you. We can't risk losing WWE. So you're going to disrespect guys. And, and 
the conventions lose money because now they have the potential of having more wrestling fans come there because of two different fa- two different companies being there. But WWE is just flexing their muscles. This is how it is. This is how it is with this giant corporation that was once the little guy trying to build itself up and became the big guy and fought through it when another big guy was trying to take them out to the point where they could crap on wrestlers they didn't like, um, treat them like garbage, and they became too big for themselves. And now they're trying to screw again. It's a shame. It is honestly a shame, and they should all be ashamed of themselves, whoever is in on this. Um, If it's true, it's just truly disgusting. And I I don't know. It makes me wonder if I want to watch WWE again. It makes me wonder if I want to do this. You know, this would probably be just strictly an AW show, because I'm not giving that up, because it's a great show. And I don't want to give up on WWE. But if they're going to pull stunts like this, then yeah, I do, because that... The whole thing with Vicky Guerrero and what she did. And what she did for WWE for years. For years. And she was a presence in wrestling. And WWE wasn't exactly knocking down her door. So she took her podcast and went and did um, an appearance with the AEW. And now all of WWE's talent is banned from going on her show. So she makes her money. Her husband. Killed himself for that company, for WWE. Killed himself for them. And this is what they do to his wife? It's disgusting. It's disgusting, and they deserve to lose. That's not how you treat anybody. There's no respect there, and I hate it. And I, it's just, it really bothers me how it works. Um. Yeah, so this convention rule and just everything WWE is doing by flexing their muscles that way to try and destroy AEW any way they can. It's just making them look petty. And I know they're not going anywhere, but I hope they do. Because if this is the way it's going to be, I don't want a Wednesday night war. I don't want a war with AEW. I want them both to exist. You know, shots have been fired on both sides. I'm not going to say AEW's innocent. But if AEW had the chance to flex this muscle, I don't know that they would. Because of the respect they're showing. You know? They're showing respect for the old guard. They're showing respect for the sport, the business. You know? And they're doing it and happily. And they get to wrestle. And they get to be, you know, I'll say stars. They get to be stars in the wrestling ring. People are chanting their names. They deserve that. They put in the work. But WWE, you should be ashamed of yourself. That's disgraceful. If you're doing this, just pure shame should go your way. And that's how I feel about it. And I'm going to mull this over. I'm going to take some time and mull it over and see. And if it continues and I continue hearing things about this, I might just give up WWE. It's not worth it. But, you know, there's so many other great wrestling uh, promotions out there uh, that, A, I could bring on the show and talk about. Um, But, yeah, no. like So if I go out there and I... Let's say I bring somebody on from AEW or, or am interviewing somebody from AEW. I know it's a small 20-minute wrestling podcast, but hey, let's just let's theorize, shall we? Does that mean WWE is going to look at it and be like, no, never? I'm fine. Fine. That's the way it is. That's fine by me. That's all I'm going to say on that. Because it really bugs me. And I, I I may come out and say more over the com- upcoming weeks, but that's it for now. So, with that being said, let me know what you guys think. I do love to hear it. Maybe you could change my opinion. You know, um, I'm going to try and link below all the stuff that I was talking about and where I got it from. Um, you know, a lot of it's from Wrestle Talk, A lot of it's from uh, Wrestling Observer. Um, PW Insider. Things like that. Like, you know, I go over and you know, I, I read everything or watch all the videos and stuff. Big fan of Wrestle Talk, Support Wrestle Talk. Um, lots of stuff there. So, uh, you know, so that's just how I feel about it. You know, the show is 20 minute wrestling podcast to do it. Um, just because I really enjoy watching the shows. I really enjoy pro wrestling and everything, you know, all the storytelling and everything about it. So, you know, there's nothing really to this. Not a lot of news, not a lot that I bring to it. It's just more opinion based, but I hope you guys enjoy it. 
uh, and I will continue. I'm trying to get some interviews on here and things like that, so uh, I look forward to it. But uh, until then, make sure you pay attention. Go to thescenesnobs.com. We have tons of shows and videos and stuff like that to go check out, articles, um, so uh, and more coming your way. Um, we just started Behind the Box, which are called Classics um, Podcast. started last week with myself and Rob Gosher um, hosting. Uh, it was a lot of fun because it was John Carpenter Appreciation Week. We had a lot of shows that based around John Carpenter's work. And uh, we also have an, we're shooting, uh, recording episode four of the Pulling Focus podcast, which is a filmmaking podcast with myself and Brian Patrick from Skyline Indie Film Festival. We got tons of stuff going on. I have two The Scene Songs podcasts coming out this week. One with uh, Andy Garzin um, and one with uh, Ryan Kudahe from... Uh, Andy is going to come on and talk about Lost Weekend 13, which we are proud sponsors of and coming up next week. Ryan's going to come on and talk about his movie, Mount Skylight. Uh, it's a 100% um, Virginia film. He's using everybody from uh, on the crew from Virginia, shooting all through Virginia, about Virginia, the whole night. So we're going to talk more about with him this week. Um, we are also going to another event that we're sponsoring, the Psychorama Sleepover Trailer Reveal Party, which is tomorrow night. Uh, with Psycho Cinema. Very excited for that. So, and we got tons of other stuff coming on. So stay tuned. Go to thescenesnobs.com. Make sure you're following us on Instagram, Twitter, or uh, Facebook at The Scene Snob. Make sure you're going on to um, uh, all our platforms, wherever you listen to our podcast. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, follow, uh, especially here on YouTube uh, if you're watching there. And then hit the notifications buttons because we have stuff coming out every day. All right, well, until next time, it was fun talking to you, and I will talk to you later. Take care.